Hi there, my name is Ben Rollison and this is Paint Out, my new script for After Effects, um, which takes the pain out of painting. It really does as well, it really can make many a paint task that would otherwise be difficult and time consuming easy and quick. So, you know, sometimes tasks that might take you hours can be reduced to minutes or even seconds, um, depending on the kind of shot that you're working with. Now, before I launch into loads of detail and show you everything that Paint Out can do, and in case you missed that little example that was in the intro a couple of seconds ago, I'm going to just do an example to show you how quick this can be. I'm going to use this example here with uh, blue tracking marks on the cover of a book that's moving around nicely, being rotated, and plenty of movement, and just to show you how quickly we can do it. We've got the shot tracked. Paint Out works by bringing together the power of trackers and the power of paint strokes. So you track your shot first. And what I'm going to do is remove these as quickly as I can. So let's start the clock. First of all, we select our footage layer. Let's up the clone size a little bit. We'll choose a vector to define our rotation. And we'll choose color adjust. Select those two and hit go. Let's select these two. Change the old offset here to minus 40 and hit go once again. Stop the clock. That took under 20 seconds. And we've removed those tracking markers from a whole nine seconds of footage. Now you may say that's a pretty easy shot, and indeed you'd be right, there's not much crossing and stuff like that. And you know, there is stuff here where it's not perfect, where those fingers cross the tracking mark at the beginning, um, that's not perfect. But the paint out also gives you tools to deal with that. In this case, we might just remove that tracking mark there by adjusting the in point of the layer and touch up those few frames manually if we wanted to. It gives you other tools as well. There's loads. There's effects on these layers that allow you to control and animate those paint strokes. It really does give you an exceptional level of control and of visualization. So there you go. If you think paint out something for you, stay tuned. Let's launch into the detail. Now, as I mentioned before in that very quick demo there, Paint Out basically works by bringing together the power of paint strokes and trackers. So before you begin with Paint Out, you need to have tracked your shot. It doesn't actually matter what you use to track your shot, as long as you turn those trackers, whether they be 2D or 3D trackers, into nulls. And those nulls are what Paint Out uses to control the paint strokes. So that's exactly what I've got. And as you can see, um, there's quite a few trackers, over 20 I think, including the back of the book. It's quite a long shot, it's 20 seconds long, and there's quite a lot of tricky movement in it. There's, there's trackers that are being obscured by rotation, there's, there's trackers that are being obscured by things passing in front, there's a lot of rotation in the shot overall, and there's quite a lot of fast, blurry movement as well. So what I'm going to do very quickly is just first of all remove the four blue trackers off the book. Um, you can see that here are all my nulls. Um, I've sort of divided them up so that um, if we just show the actual tracking points on this number eight, number eight would be the one down here. And actually, just so I can see it better, let me turn the view options to turn keyframes off. That's a bit better. Um, and as you can see, that when that rotates and disappears, so that null disappears as well. And then when it reappears, it reappears there. You don't have to do it like that, that's just how I've done it. But like I say, we're only going to be dealing with these first four at the moment. These are the blue uh, tracker dots on the front of the book. Uh, they're a little bit big, probably a bit bigger than they should be. When you use Paint Out, the first thing you need to choose is the layer that you want to paint on. And the choice of layers you get is basically any layer that's the same size and as the current composition and centered. So if you want to paint on something that's not like that, you need to pre-compose it first. Select that, that's the layer we're gonna put our paint strokes on. Um, you're also gonna to need to decide on a start clone offset. Now you can change this at any point later on. Um, and because we're dealing with fairly big tracking markers here, I'm probably gonna up it from the standard. I'm probably gonna go for something like 55 offset and maybe 45 clone size. So the size of the clone is good and big enough to cover each of these points, which I suspect are around about 30 pixels across, plus a little bit, plus the fact that they get bigger when they motion blur. 
So 45 and 55 is probably a good bet. Because we've got a rotating book here, I actually don't really want to do the offset in screen coordinates. I'd rather have the offset uh, rotate with the book. And what I can do with a vector offset is I can choose a vector along which that offset happens. Now, if I select these two layers here, upper left and upper right, you can see that the line between them from upper left to upper right forms a direction, forms a vector, and that vector is by and large parallel to the top of the book. And what we ideally like to do is have our vector offset, having our clone offset, sorry, run along that imaginary line. So this one will be offset there, this one will be offset there, and as we turn, it'll be offset there and there there and then so on and so forth. We need to define that vector. So under start we just select number 63, the front cover UL, and under end we'll select the front cover upper right, and that basically is defined the vector along which our offset is going to take place. Color adjust is for a little bit of fine adjustment of the color if the cloner doesn't do it quite properly. Select each of the nulls that you want to create a paint stroke for and hit go. Very simple. And let's see what we've got. Let me just uh, zoom out a shade. I would guess that we've got something that's not bad. Yeah, you know, save for a few little bits and bobs. By and large, those tracking points are removed. Now, here is a frame that's notable for its wrongness. Um, what's happening is we're tracking these points. And by the way, now, if you ever need to know which points you're looking at, let's just select the lower right here. If you click blink, then paint out will just blink that uh, paint stroke for you twice or sometimes once. It depends how quickly your screen is able to update and it'll just show you where it is. Otherwise, you can always come on to the effects on the layer and turn on show and that will just leave it on permanently. It's very slightly see-through so you can see the tracking mark underneath and that just can allow you to work on it a bit better. More of that in a moment. And as you can see, the, the, the basic sort of modus operandi of um, paint out is that you're now controlling the actual paint strokes from the null layers that they track. You've got 10 paint out effects on here and that controls everything that you need to control about the paint layer. Plus the fact you can turn them on and off by setting the in and out points of the layers themselves. Um, and that's really all you need to be able to do. And you can change the position of them by changing the position of the null layer itself. Now, here on this particular one, if I just pop show on again, we are sampling along the vector, remember, this vector, and we're going in this direction because the vector runs in this direction. We're sampling from there, and that means we're getting the edge of the book, which we don't want. So we have this flip control, and that basically flips the vector. Instead of going in that direction, we go in that direction. We go the exact opposite way, and if I flip that, that one will be fine. And obviously I'm going to need to do that to the upper right as well, so we'll just come to the same effect on there and flip. There we go. That will have got rid of the most pressing and immediate problem. Okay, just scrubbing along, looks pretty good. There's clearly this point here where the um, tracking mark is getting in front of the fingers. Now that's such a complicated thing. You've got this complicated shape moving right in front of the tracking mark. I would suggest that from around about frame, even from about frame 68, let's say, right through till maybe frame 107. We're just going to turn that one off. So we're coming to lower right. Once again into the effects, we have the opacity. I'm just going to stick a, um, a toggled keyframe at the beginning. What did I say? 68. Let's just toggle that off. And then you can see it's crossing over there. And by that point there, we'll just turn it back on. And what I'll do in a moment is I'll just come in and I'll just remove those tricky bits manually. It's only a matter of sort of 30 frames or so that I can just brush out. Now, other problems. Here is a bit of a key moment. You can see that 
there's some very fast movement between, let's say, frame 55 and frame 77. Let's just zoom in on that for a second. Um, in that fast movement, the motion blur has made the tracking marks bigger. And because they're bigger, they don't cover what they should cover. It's just about OK, but it's not really what I like to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, upper right here, just look at the effects once again. And I'm going to say, well, by this point here, everything's good. And just on the diameter and on the roundness, I'm going to put the key frame. But by the time we get to here, it's not really working. And by the time we get to here, it's really not working. So at that point, I'm just going to blow the diameter up a touch. I'm going to pop show on for a second. And I'm just also going to adjust the roundness and the rotation at this point to just move in sync with that motion blur. So it's getting bigger and it's shaping to that motion blur. And when it gets to this point, we can come back to a roundness of 100 and we can come back to our original diameter, which I forgot what it was. So we just keyframe those two points. And let's just turn the show off. Did I mention that uh, you can change the show color if you don't like it, if you want a different color? That's easily done here as well. If I turn the show off, we should now find that that motion blurry bit, oh, no, it's still a little bit on the large side. side there. We just need to go up perhaps a shade higher. Tell you what, let's do it in there. It's got to 80 on the diameter and that should just about do it. That's now covered our motion blur problem. Now we've got the same motion blur problem on the top left so what I might do is just go to there, copy these diameter keyframes, come into the same effect on the upper left and we'll just paste them on there and we'll paste the roundness rotation ones in there as well. Easy peasy. And which was the other one? That's lower left. We would need to go into roundness rotation. Paste that. And the diameter and hardness, and we'll paste that as well. And we should now find that that motion blur is gone for the whole thing. Now, a funny little effect here. This clone mark is just a shade lighter than it should be. Um, there we can go into color adjust and we can just pull it down a fraction at that point just to make it a little darker. I suspect that a few frames before it was perfectly good where it was in the middle. But you notice you can just sort of change the color in any direction you like and you can you know, just tweak anything in any direction which is really very very handy. So we'll leave that there, and once we come over to there, it's a bit darker, you can see. So we'll just up that back to 128, so in the middle, I'll do 126. Near enough. It's a quick demo, remember. It's got to be quick. Got to be quick. Now, what else have we got going on here? We've got some funny bits here where uh, they go off the edge of the book. Tracking markers, how very, very rude. So once again, I'm just going to turn um, show on like this. And there, I think, I mean, at that point, that's pretty good. So we'll put around this rotation keyframe there. And at this point, I'm just going to slim it down a touch. Give it a different show color. Slim it down a touch and rotate it around a little bit. And that should stop it going off the edge. And it does. This one here is the same, that's the lower left. So just very quickly we'll come in, put the show on, and we'll adjust the roundness and rotation at that point just to make sure that it doesn't go off the edge. Is that covering? I think that's going to continue to cover it, isn't it? So I think we're actually 
good there. Once again, it's a little bit light at a certain point, so we could just do a very small colour adjustment at that point, just to bring it into line. That's good. You often find that with the surfaces, they look as though they're very even in colour, but they're just very slightly more lit, a couple of pixels offset. You can see there as well that it's very slightly off, but I'll leave it for the moment just for the sake of speed. Now then, I think we're almost there. Um, that's pretty much as far as you'll probably get those tracking markers um, with the automatic stuff. There's a few little bits and bobs. There's this point with the crossing over, which needs to be done manually. And is there something at the end as well? Yeah, there's a little point there at the end. Now, it's completely um, compatible with the sort of manual stuff as well, of course it is. Let me just show you a couple of quick features and show the link between uh, the nulls here, the controller nulls, and the paint strokes themselves. If I select, say, the, um, the lower right paint stroke here, this one here, or the, the null, should I say. And I come up to select paint strokes and I click that. It'll select all paint strokes, all paint out paint strokes associated with that null. So if I come back to the timeline and I press S twice, it will solo the selected effects. And you can see, indeed, it's selected all the brushes for the lower right um, null that we had selected. Now that also works the other way around. If I select a lower right paint stroke and I hold down shift and press select nulls, it selects the null associated with the selected paint strokes. Let's just have a quick look at all of those paint out paint strokes and let's choose one from upper left and one from lower right, for instance. Shift and select nulls and it gets upper left and lower right. If I press select nulls without hitting shift, it takes a little longer and it selects all nulls in the composition that have any paint strokes associated with them. So there you go. And finally, um, if you ever want to remove a paint stroke on the upper right there, for instance, you can just hit remove paint and it'll say you want to remove the effects off the null layer as well. We'll say yes. And there you can see it's gone. And on that particular null layer, all of the paint out effects are gone as well. But actually, we'll keep that. Now I'm just going to slip into something a little bit more sped up. Well, there we go. Uh, manually cleaned up. That manual cleanup on um, one or two tracking markers over about 25 30 frames took about 10 minutes just for that tiny little bit and basically that's a pretty good demonstration of um, the the reason that uh, I made paint out in the first place is to get rid of that insane kind of effort to get rid of these kind of um, these things you know paint out automates the four points for the other 400 odd frames um, in half the time Okay, well there it is. That's a very, very brief introduction. There's lots of other tips and stuff that I'll, uh, I'll come to doing little tutorials on. I'll work into the main user guide and so on. Um, hope you like it. It's available from AE Scripts and my name's Ben. Thanks for listening.